Hey everyone, this is Alex Smith with My Honest Agent and Remax Reading, and I just want to talk about inspections today. What are they? They're a hot ticket item. Uh, a lot of buyers have to negate them right now. What does that mean for you as a seller? What are the risks? Um, do lenders require inspections? A lot of the answers we'll be getting into today. So let's just go through the list of inspections you can get. Now you can get many forms of this. Um, I've had agents come up with creative different inspections to help negotiate in a deal um, and we'll get into a little bit of why let's go and start with some of the ones you don't see as often now this is my market pennsylvania berks county um, reading area so this is in our agreement of sale a few of them that are listed uh, so the wood infestation that's a pretty common one some lenders do require it government programs fha va uh, I believe USDA as well will require a termite test. They're gonna look for termites, powder post beetles, um, you know, even carpenter bees or carpenter ants they'll even look for. So they will just go in, look at your joists, make sure you have no evidence of that. If you do, you will have to get it remediated to continue with someone that has that type of financing that would require that. Um, another one is deed restrictions and zoning. So you can investigate any easements, um, deed use restrictions. So if it's in a historical preservation area, you can investigate the necessity of that and what's all involved. Um, uh, an easement is just an allowance for, you know, sometimes an easement will be a utility person that needs to come through. Uh, if you have electric lines, they have the ability to do that on your deed. Uh, typically you'll see a person do this if they wanna open up a business in the home um, and they want to make sure that the zoning is fit for that. Water service, you can in obtain an inspection for the quality of the water. Um, two different types of tests. There's a coliform, just a general bacteria, testing to see if there's bacteria in the water. And then there's a nitrate and nitrate test, testing to see how much iron is in the uh, water. A UV system is a UV light that can kill any bacteria and then a reverse osmosis system is the cure if there's any issues with high iron or nitrates in the water. Um, on lot sewage, that's a big one as well. Uh, that's if you have a septic system in suburban areas or city areas, you'll have uh, hooked up to a sewer line that goes to a city system and you pay a quarterly bill. Whereas there's many, many different types of on-lot sewage systems, cesspools, um, drain fields, drip systems, stream irrigation, holding tanks. Some of those are a little less uh, common. In my market, you see a lot of drain fields and sand mounds are the other ones. Uh, they will test it to make sure that the tank is in good condition, the thing that holds the waste. Um, you, they will test to make sure that the waste water is not distributing and then coming back up to the top of the soil. So they call that percolation testing to make sure that the water is percolating to uh, the ground as it should. They'll also check to make sure there's no leaks in the pipes. Um, different types of tests are state rated. In Pennsylvania, we have a PSMA test. If a PSMA certified inspector is looking at it, it's a really good test to get. Property and flood insurance uh, test, that's to make sure that the house is insurable and that it's not in a flood zone if it wasn't disclosed prior. Um, property boundary test, that's a survey. Um, costs a little bit of money to get someone out to figure out exactly where the marks are for the property lines. Most likely you will need this if you have a farm, um, if you're trying to build a fence, if there's anything specific um, that you need from a property survey, you would elect the property boundary inspection. Another one is lead-based paint. If the home was built before 1978, you can test to see if the paint has lead in it. The big one that everyone has a lot of questions about is the home and property inspection. And this one is just a general inspection. So they're gonna look at the roof, the heater, they're gonna look at electric outlets, and they're gonna look at plumbing. They're gonna make sure that everything is running okay and not leaking, um, that the, uh, the switches and the outlets work and that they're hooked up correctly. They're going to look and see if there's any obvious issues with structural um, stuff. So I think the big misconception with home inspections that I see is 
that people think that you go in, you find out about all these issues, and then you get the seller to fix them. Well, in fact, what happens is you go in and the home inspector brings up possible concerns. And then it's up to the buyer to decide, is that a concern that is big enough for me to make a consideration on the seller or is that something I need fixed? So I've seen things as far as um, you know, the faucet drips a little bit when it's turned off. That comes up on a home inspection. But same thing with, hey, we saw a big crack in the wall and we recommend review by another contractor, which is a very, very common phrase. You'll hear, um, you they'll see something wrong and recommend review by a more professional person, someone that has expertise in that field. So if it's a electric issue, review by electrician, um, if it's a plumbing issue, review by a plumber, etc. The way I've seen people get creative about this is say you go through your showing and you have concerns about the roof um, and people's natural next step would be I want a home inspection. Well if everything about the house aside from the roof looks really good then I would recommend getting a roof certification. Um, just certifying that the roof has life left on it and that it's not currently leaking um, and that you know at least you have a few years left on the roof. Uh, other things that you can do is just a plumbing test, um, a sewer line inspection. In the city sometimes tree roots will grow into uh, septic pipes and I know a lot about that because that happened to me and the basement filled with wastewater. It was terrible but either way you can get that line tested rather than having a general home inspection not really finding out much about that specifically but if you have concerns about specific things collecting a test for those specific things um, is a little less burdenous on the seller because they won't think it's a huge big home inspection that anything could come up and then it's up to the buyer's uh, decision to see if it's a concern or not um, it's more specific and more clarified as to what the concern is. So the general home inspection, it's uh, obviously recommended for everybody by every licensee. Um, honestly, right now, it's not an option for everyone that wants to win in a competitive situation because a lot of consumers are electing not to do them. So I recommend with your agent, just take the chance. Um, the showing is your private chance. Run the faucets. Um, you know, try an outlet with a phone charger, do a couple things, um, and just really look at a home before you, you make an offer because you, you want to know what's going on. And if you do have concerns, just make sure that you bring those up to your agent and uh, hopefully you can find a creative way to work around the home inspection and still get an offer uh, accepted. So if you have any questions, reach out to me. I'd love to help out. Uh, this has been Alex Smith and My Honest Agent and all about inspections. Thank you.